<sighs> Let me turn that light out and see how that looks. Oh, uh, I miss this light. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that's better. Nah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, how y'all doing? I'm going to, uh, I, what I did is I learned to get on early and give Facebook five minutes to build the audience, as they say. So at, uh, at 12 o'clock um, Eastern is when I'm going to start the broadcast. But what, what's, yeah, what's happening, Tanya? Hey, cuz, what's up, April? <laughs> yeah, get, get our shout outs while we're here. Hey, ah, Tammy, say hi to Miller for me and, uh. You know, y'all know family, I love you. Hey, Tom Yakovic, long time. Hey, good to see you, man. Hey, I got a Toastmasters meeting tonight. I'm going to rejoin. So, uh, great. Thank you all. Um, like I said, I'm just going to do that. Uh, I, I've learned to get on early. And then, uh, you know, I'm not doing one of those, well, let's wait for more people. I actually got on early. 12 o'clock Eastern is when I start 11 o'clock. Uh, Central, if that's where you are. Hey, Ray. So, um, you know, we're going to talk about glue. I, I, is the lighting is good. Yeah, I, I like this lighting. And so, uh, you know, that's cool. So I'll just do the shout outs while we're waiting. Y'all are the early people. But like I said, I'm not going to penalize you. And you ever notice that, uh, you know, people will penalize the people who come early uh, on, on time, rather. You're early. So I'm not penalizing you. But when the time hits, bam. If, you know, as, as people read this in the archive, by the way, if you're in the speaking business, that's, that's also very important. Um, you know, when you are given a certain amount of time to speak, speak in that amount of time. You know, it's, it's kind of frustrating. I know sometimes, you know, we want to get our full message out. But if you know in advance how much time you have, then you, you technically you should craft your message so that it fits that time frame because you know that it's important for the people who you're speaking to to continue their uh event and you you are part of the event you are you, you know life is about being a messenger and so you are part of the event and you're part of the message so it's always important if you're the speaker to uh start on time and end on time if possible you know they're they're rare cases but, uh, you know, always make that your goal. And, and mo most importantly, don't get a reputation for always going over your time. Hey, Heidi. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, have a good run. <laughs> Love you, too. Hi, what are you doing? Another marathon? Gary, yo, long time. Hey, home homeboy. Welcome, welcome. Hey, everybody. By the way, we got one more minute and then I'm going to get us started. But what I want to do was get on Facebook early and let them do what they call build the audience and, you know, send out these messages. Hey, Harold. Wow. Hey, so we got somebody li uh, listening in from Norway, everybody. Uh, that's that's my Norwegian buddy. And there goes my family. Renee, I knew you were loyal. You'd be here. <laughs> hey, what's up, Stephanie? Goodness. Our oh, family is on the block. Oh, man. Good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. Okay, well, uh, it's like a countdown to uh, to New Year's. It's almost 10 o'clock. It's almost 12 o'clock. So um, you go over your time. Ah, <laughs> Sammy, right. Like I said, there are rare cases about going over time, but the key is you don't want to develop um, a reputation that you go over time. You know, that's the key. So, it's, and speaking of that, it's 12 o'clock now. Let's get started. Uh, and, and what I want to do first is say to you, um, you know, today's message uh, is, a, is, is kind of inspired. As, as I was thinking about what I was going to say, I go back to one of my good friends and speaking mentors, Tracy Brown in, in Dallas. And what Tracy had done earlier, a couple of weeks ago, she had posted a, a message asking, what is your theme for the year? What is your theme for the year. And uh, and it made me realize that I actually didn't have a theme this year. Usually I do have a theme uh, each year, but I hadn't done one in a, in a couple of years. 
So I ask you, you know, also check what your theme is. And, uh, you know, and that that's not the same, by the way, as goal setting or um, uh, New Year's resolution. But what's your theme for the year? So my theme for the year, I realized, that's not, you know, I didn't just do it immediately after Tracy said it. I thought about it and I, and I, and I meditated and, and watched what was going on in my life. And I decided that my theme for the year is back to basics. My theme for this year is back to basics. See, I, I need to get back to what, what God has gifted me to do. And so going back to basics for me, the way my computer's doing something, oh, I see what it's doing. Going back to basics for me is going back to 1994. Um, for those of you who know, I, I worked at the Wall Street Journal for 18 years, from 1975 to 1993. And, oop, quick, quick. Quick uh, lesson right there, by the way, if you heard the use of words, uh, I always said I worked for. I, I never said I worked for, by the way. I always said I worked with. So I hope I didn't make that mistake. But uh, you, my father taught me that you work with people at a company for yourself. And when, when you have the truth is that companies would rather you have that mindset because you've always heard that thing where someone said, well, that's not my job or, uh, hey, it's not, it's five o'clock, it's time for me to go. See, there's something that you will do for yourself that you would not or may not do for a company. So always have the mindset that you're working for yourself because technically you are. If they didn't pay you, you wouldn't work in most cases. You, you know, you're doing it to support your family. You're doing it to pay your rent. You're doing it to make your car note. Those are things that are for you. So work with people at a company for yourself. So in 1993, I retired from the journal after 18 years. I started as a messenger in New York. And when I left, I was a regional advertising manager, having transferred from New York to Washington, D.C. to Chicago. And I, tra I, I retired in, 19, in November of 1993, and I, and I started uh, my entrepreneurial path. Well, in 1994, uh, that's when I got a message from God. And, um, you know, those of you know that, you know, one of my gifts is uh, my poetry, is using my poetry. And so um, I, I published a, a quick little, you know, handmade book at, at um, Kinko's, gave myself a book signing. During the book signing, I had little contests with people doing a poetry reading and I, and I and got some of my friends to give me prizes and we gave prizes. Well, one of my good friends, Kurt, uh, I wonder how Kurt's doing. He said, you want me to videotape it? I said, hey, good idea. And he said that the day before we did it. So I didn't have it all that planned out. Um, so we videotaped it. After the book signing, everybody came up to me and said, oh, man, you did great, you know, blah, 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 you were wonderful. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, you're my friend, you're supposed to say that, so thank you. But, and, and that's the point. Sometimes we take our gifts for granted. See, I had a gift, I have a gift, and, and, and I, I was taking it for granted. I said, oh, yeah, well, yeah, you know, you're my friend, you're being supportive, you're supposed to say I was wonderful. How many people come up to you after you done a speech or, or done something and say, hey, God, you sucked. You were terrible. They usually come up and give you some kind of supportive um, remarks. So that's really kind of how I felt. But when I went home, I, I popped in the videotape, VHS, by the way, I popped in the videotape and I'm watching the videotape and I had, I was lying down on my couch. And as I was watching the videotape, I started to slowly sit up and look at that videotape, and I was like, damn, I am good. <laughs> see, sometimes you need to see yourself the way other people see you. Not that you need to be who other people think you are, P.S., by the way, but sometimes you need to see yourself as other people see you, and then what you do is you look at what mix you want based on what they see versus and who you are, and you find out where those two come together, and I think that that's what helps you grow into being who you are. So as I'm watching that videotape and I'm saying, man, I'm, I really am that good, that's when my conversation with God came in. And God said to me, he said, Sporty, this is what you're going to do. You're going to use your poetry to uplift people's life. 
And the next day, I went into my friend Adrian that, that I was working with, Anderson, I think her last name, Renee, you wouldn't know that for sure. And, um, and I said to her, you know what, I've worked on your dream for four months, now it's time for me to work on mine. So back to basics, you know, I, I, I decided uh, to, to um, start publishing my poetry. And when I started out with it, I called it Spoetry, S-P-O-E-T-R-Y, which was for Sporty's Poetry. Then, because I got into my acronym addiction, I decided that Spoetry should mean S-P-O-E-T-R-Y, Sporty's Poetry opens emotions to reach you. Sporty's poetry opens emotions to reach you. In other words, the way we really reach people is at a spiritual level. So I found that that was the gift in my poetry is to be able for people to use it and help it enrich their lives. So what I did is uh, I decided that, you know, a lot of times people, the, the, the biggest argument we have with poetry is it's so subjective. You know, you ever had a poetry class and one person says, well, I think that the poet was saying this. And other person, well, I think the poet was saying that. Well, when I decided to poet, publish my poetry, one of my goals was that I want to explain why I wrote the poem. You know, instead of someone saying, well, this is what the, I think the poet was saying. I said, no, 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 let me explain what I was saying. Because the key is I want somebody to get it right. I want somebody to read that poem and say, well, I think the poet is saying this, and then they'd be right. And then that's what's going to enrich their lives. So, so here, this is the first book that I did. It's called I Found Out I'm Dying. And I'm going to share two poems from this book and, and show you how to use the poem and how I use them in my book. Now, if you don't have the book yet, you need to get caught up. You can go to my website and you can purchase, purchase it. I'd love it if you support me with that. And, uh, and for everybody that purchased the book, uh, uh, any book, by the way, then next week I'll give you a shout out and rededicate a poem to you. But here's, here's, here's uh, uh, the book and I'm going to read it to you. First, I'm going to read you the introduction to the opening poem, I Found Out I'm Dying. When we have a healthy attitude about life, we realize that physical immortality is not one of our options. If the doctor gave and could really give you two months to live, would you live with reckless abandon? Or would you spend precious time with loved ones? Would you take the time to encourage a child to believe in him or herself using your gift, your blessing, your fortune, your spirituality, yourself as an example? Statistics show that after being eagerly anticipated for one to 10 months, fully 100% of the people born immediately begin the aging process that could ultimately result in their dying. Yet there are no statistics that show just how full our lives become when we allow ourselves to let go and enjoy each moment as if it were our last. Honesty, trust, Empathy, consideration, integrity, introspection, laughter, love. When we surround our lives with a balanced blend of these gifts, we find plenty of reasons to celebrate. This book is about the joy we must take advantage of during this gift called life. L-I-F-E. Lessons intended for everyone. So the opening poem is, I found out I'm dying. You see, actually, I've known it for quite some time now, but for so many others, it's new news. So I'd like to thank you, God, for yesterday, as much as I do for today. And I ask that you, my friends, pause, but not stop, to think about some of the wild things I've survived before this, my greatest challenge. And believe me, death is the only challenge we won't sit and talk about or relive, but we can find joy in it. Joy because there'll be enough kind words at the funeral to create a new dictionary. Kind words that I need now more than ever. You see, kind words keep us alive, physically, mentally, spiritually. I found out I'm dying. And when I woke up this morning, I wept. Then I laughed aloud <laughs> and started to sing. But remember that I couldn't sing. So I danced instead. And I whistled a tune as I made my bed. I threw open the window and let out a cheer. Actually, I just smiled so no one could hear. I exercised, ate, and dressed after I washed. Then I looked in the mirror and gave myself a wink. 
Not bad for a body that survived another day. I'm so blessed to get older is all I could think. I didn't bother reading the obituary because I knew I wasn't there. Instead, I clipped my fingernails and neatly styled my hair. I found out I'm dying and that I have been since day number one. So I spend little time regretting my life because I'd rather spend the time having fun. And so y'all could do thumbs up or like the laughter. That's the end of the poem, like snapping your fingers. But anyway, the, it's the last four lines of the poem that what it's all about. I spend little time regretting my life because I'd rather spend the time having fun. You know, everybody is going to die. Bulletin, one day, you know, the, 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 a great a speaker I know, he said, live every day as if it's your last and one day you'll be right. So, it, you know, when people say, well, sport, you know, you talk about death a lot. No, actually, I talk about life. I don't talk about death. I talk about life and I talk about enjoying life. And here's, but here's another lesson that you can get from that poem. And thank you for those likes and hearts. And from that poem and this book is notice if, if you can see it, the, the, the joke is not the joke, but it says, I found out I'm dying. And then the subtitle is a celebration of life. So the book is not about dying at all. It's all about living. Every poem in here is about a different way to enjoy life from a different angle. And so it also, it also helps you bring to, to light the point that so often we get caught up by the headlines in life and we don't spend enough time looking at the subtitles. The subtitles is where we need to live. If you look at the newspapers, you know, what do they do? You know, big headline, you know, crash. And so we look at that and then we get all, you know, and then we, we don't look at, about, at, at how many survivors there were and what happened. We got to look at the subtitle. So the title, yeah, I found out I'm dying. In other words, I know that one day I won't be here and I'm okay with that. I'm not, you know, and don't worry, I'm not about to, you know, have one of them suicide missions right here on the, on the live broadcast. You know, I'm not suicidal. I, I, I just really enjoy life. And, um, you know, like I say, the Bible I read, everybody in the Bible died. And, and, and then meanwhile, you know, those history buffs, everybody in history is gone. So, you know, so, you know, death is ine inevitable. Why are you stressing yourself out on these little things that interfere with you living your life. Live your life. You know, you know, you have you ever seen that thing about the, the dash, you know, in your life that your your born year and your death year, but it's the dash that we have to deal with. What are you doing with the middle of your life? Are you even allowing yourself to live? So, you know, find out that you're dying. Recognize that one day you just won't be here. It's not a big deal. It's part of the deal. What will your legacy say? Because, you know, it's just like, you know, don't you know how when we have people that die, we say, well, they're still here with us in spirit. Well, someone's going to say that about you one day. So what will your spirit be doing while it's there? Will it be bringing people down or will it be lifting people up? And that's what I like you to do is keep lifting people up. So uh, here's the second poem that I decided I wanted to share with you. And it's, um, and, and like I say, by the way, what I'm reading is, the, is usually I'll have something before the poem to tell you how to use the poem or after you read the poem so that you can go back and say, oh, that's what he was saying. Uh, and, you know, I always say that my poetry has to be read at least three times. See, the first time you'll get your thought about what you think I was saying. The second time, after you read uh, you know, what I may have written after the poem, then you'll get my thought of why I wrote that poem. So now you've got to read it the third time and you get our part, our point, and now we're sharing. And see, that's what life has got to be about. You've got to share, but you've got to find who to share with. It's so important to choose your messengers carefully. You'll hear me say that just about every week. Choose your messengers carefully because who you share with becomes who you, how you share who you are. So, Here's, here's the introduction to controlling angels. One of the principles I live by is what I call sportism number one. Give. Sooner or later, you'll catch up to what you've received. For what have you got to give if you have no spirit of giving? Material possessions are exchanged, not given. How much we share is often the barometer by which our success can be judged. 
You've heard the saying, I've got an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other. On the other. My belief is that I have an angel on each shoulder. I just don't always know which one to follow. Because our hard choices in life are not between good and evil, but between good and good. So this is controlling angels. As one angel begged me to follow the right path, the other urged me down the left. Either presented me with a lining of gold, each had a method to its madness, or each had a method to its blessing. Both knew when they had my attention. As important as it is to control your angels, it is equally crucial that you walk the path on the correct side, no matter what side that be. See, I, you know, I believe that the opposite of right is left. The opposite of right is not wrong. You have a right and a left side. And so the choices that we make, we make a lot of good choices in life, but sometimes we don't give ourselves credit for the choices that we make because we let somebody else come in and tell us how bad that choice was. But how many of us purposely go out and say, you know what, I'm in the mood for making a bad choice. Let me go out and do something totally stupid. Okay, maybe I better not say that because some people do. No, but really, you, you don't say that. You, you tend to think that you're doing what's best for you based on the information that you have to make the decision. Give yourself self-credit. We do a lot of right things, but we let somebody else tell us that it's wrong. See, my belief is that wrong is somebody else's opinion of something that you did that didn't benefit them. Wrong is something, somebody else's opinion of something that you did that didn't benefit them. And so therefore, they try to, to devalue your decisions and your choices by telling you it was wrong and then you don't feel right. You don't feel good about it. But the truth is, most of the things that you do are part of your path and a part of your pace that you have to be on. This is your life. You know, everybody is different. And on your life, you're going to do some things that other people won't agree with. But isn't, you know, wisdom is still in retrospect. And a lot of times those messed up moves that you make, the, the terrible person that you dated that you want to blame them for being so terrible, where, but you didn't take any, uh, you didn't put into the equation what you did that sparked that in them. You know, it, you know it's, it, again, I've always said, I don't like to call my past girlfriends ex-girlfriends because I don't want to put a mark on them. You know, you know, I was not who I am today back then. And, and, and neither were they. So the thing is, we have to learn from one another. And when you find that the relationship's not working for you, it's okay to recognize that it's time for you to go another way. You don't have to be nasty about it. But, you know, hey, maybe that's why I'm still single. But anyway, uh, you know, recognize that... Oh, wait, what was I lying about? Okay. Oh, that, that, that control your angels. You make good choices. You have a right and a left side. So if something says, well, you know what, I should do this, and then you don't say, oh, man, but if I do that, it's going to screw this up. You know, hey, it, it's, you know, sometimes our choices are the lesser of two evils. It's for the greater good. You know, we have those cliches that we hear that guide our lives, and they're true. They're good cliches. So trust yourself. Trust yourself and recognize that you make a difference in somebody's life. Someone needs you to be who you are. So do you really know who you are? So, you know, again, those two poems are in my book, I Found Out I'm Dying, a celebration of life. Enjoy life. This is, this is a, you know, every, side, every day on this side of the ground is a good one. You know, again, we say that, but then we act like we're having such a bad time on this side of the ground. So, uh, you know, go to my website, please, and purchase that book or any book. And, um, uh, and next week, I'll give you a shout out and rededicate a poem to you. Because, you know, we need to, uh, you know, I'm working on my legacy. And don't you want to one day be able to say, man, well, Sporty's gone, but I've got all these books. <laughs> so um, that's one of the things. Meanwhile, um, what I want to do in, in semi-closing is... Uh, again, Back to Basics is my theme for the year. So I'm going to every week now make sure that I read some poetry to you and, and show you how to use it. And hopefully it'll bless you right here on the spot. You know, I, I'd like you to buy the book, but if I could bless you right here, that's fine too. And also on my website, there's a, I, I had started a blog thing and then I stopped doing it, but it's still there. And it's got a lot of my poems on there. So you can always go there and check them out too and, uh, and get a chance to see how that can help you. But find your passion. You know, remember, our lesson, our, our message today is life. Lessons intended for everyone. 
what lesson are you getting out of your life? And, and what's your passion? A, a good, you know, see, my passion and my direction is for me. So what's your passion? A good way to find out your passion and your direction is ask yourself, what would you die for? What would you die for? And, and you know me, I got to keep it positive. And so for me, die is D-I-E. Do it every day. <laughs> die. What would you do it every day? What would you die for? That's one way to find your passion. And I know a lot of people say, well, you know, you find your passion by how much you help other people. You know what? I'm not worried about helping other people until I help myself. And that can sound selfish, but the truth is you can't help anybody until you take care of yourself. So I'm not talking about being nasty to other people, but I know that I've got to make sure that my physical, mental, and spiritual well-being is where it needs to be. Otherwise, I can't help anybody. If I'm broken, what do I have to offer somebody else but a, a, a path to them being broken? So, you know, I have to make sure that I'm doing what I need to do. So as you find your passion... Think about die. Do it every day. What would you do every single day? And, and, and I know people say, well, what would you do if you didn't get paid for it? Hey, get paid for it. <laughs> because, the, you, know, you, you know, when you work, you should get paid. And the other, you know, because you have to recognize your message will be delivered. You know, the message about who you are, it will be delivered. So choose your messengers, caref messengers carefully and recognize that you are someone's messages, messenger as well. So the last uh, acronym I want to give you is, um, uh, oh, you know, when, when, you, when you're thinking about delivering your message, think about your pace. Think about making sure that you get rest. And also consider talking to people. You got to talk to a lot of people. I get a lot of my inspiration from conversations that I have. I'll talk to somebody, and as I'm saying something to them, I'll think, of, I say, oh, that's a good thing. I'll use it as a tweet. So, you know, uh, check your pace, get your rest, and then talk to people. And then, you know, as you're talking to people, you know, people say, oh, only you would think of that. Well, you know what? That's why the closing acronym I want to give you is JOY. J-O-Y, just one you. See, that's worth celebrating. So when someone says, well, sporty, only you would think of that. Well, then, therefore, if I don't do it, then it won't get done. And the world won't be blessed with what I have to give. And that's the same with you. When someone says to you, only you would do that, well, that means you got to get on your job. Because we need you to be you. We need you to do what you do. J-O-Y, just one you. You bring so much joy to the other people in your life. But you don't have to sit and wait for credit for it all the time. What you, what you want to do is give yourself a pat on the back. You know, it, it, in the poem, I found that I'm dying. You know, go back and listen to it. You say, I looked in the mirror and gave myself a wink. Not bad for a body that survived another day. I'm so blessed to get older is all I could think. That's what I do. I give myself a wink in the morning. You know, give yourself a wink in the mirror and tell yourself that you look good. You didn't dress this way by accident. I don't just happen to have on a, a nice blue shirt. I got on my blue shirt because I'm a Dallas Cowboy fans. And, you know, we, Dallas, is, you know, we're going for the Super Bowl. So it's playoff weekend. So I got to get in scene as much as possible. See, that's what I do. In the process of being me, I get a chance to be blessed by you. And until I'm blessed by you, then I really can't bless you. See, so it does start with you. So make sure that you have that joy, just one you, because you mean so much to so many people. So uh, I've done a good job of keeping us to time this time. You, you know, we still got six minutes. Six minutes, Dougie Fresh will be on, but six minutes will be. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, that was somebody that just tried to call, but I didn't, unknown caller, you know anybody named unknown caller? I didn't know him. Okay, I saw that, I saw, I saw you, Richard, go Packers, yeah, go, go packing, you, you misspell Packers, just go packing, because the Cowboys will dominate. Uh, and, and Panthers, uh, I don't know, Stephanie might not know that the Panthers are, uh, out of the playoffs. <laughs> In fact, we're in the second week already, so they didn't even get past the first round. So hang with that, Stephanie. Uh, let me see if there's anything else I need to uh, 
Yeah, yeah, Amy, you are so right. I am that good. Hey, Liddell, always get to see from you. You know, I'm not going to go through and hit everybody, you know, but because you basically y'all know that I love you and I'll try to uh, look back at this and, and post some stuff on your page. But, uh, you know, uh, thanks so much for being the blessing. We got five more minutes. Um, but uh, one of the things you can always do um, is, uh, you know, um, next week, for instance, my, my subject um, is going to be stuff. <laughs> S-T-U-F-F. -F, situations that unleash our focus and faith. Next week is going to be stuff. Situations that unleash our focus and faith. And just a, a reminder to you that uh, life has its twists and turns. Uh, the reason I'm going to use that one next week is because this Saturday will be the 10th anniversary of my mother dying. And so I'm going to be going to New York to go out to the gravesite and celebrate that. Uh, I say that to to say to you, you know, hey, you know, you know, life happens, and yes, I'm I'm in mourning, but mourning doesn't always mean that you have to have a gloomy look on your face, you know. Um, I easily laugh and smile when I think about my mother because she was she did a lot of crazy stuff. A lot of the sayings that I use are born from her. You know, having someone say, you know, you just like your mother, you just like your father. That's a compliment, y'all. You know, so stop letting people say stuff to take you down. You have the choice to let it take you up. So, so in between, uh, th this is the before picture, and next week will be the after picture. But so the before picture is that I'm going to celebrate uh, out to go out to the cemetery and celebrate my mother this Saturday, and then next week, next Wednesday on our Glue Wednesday, I'm going to talk about stuff, which is actually the title of of my latest book. And, and I dedicated it to her because stuff was actually about my experience of being the person who had to sit there and watch her take her last breath. And I didn't lose my mind. Of course, I wrote a poem about it. Like to hear it? Hear it next week. So, again, thanks again for tuning in. Glue Wednesday. Because it's not about getting over the hump. It's about keeping it together. God's love undoes everything. So let me get a whole bunch of likes and hearts to close us out. Go on and click away, y'all. Click, 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 click. That's always fun to see. Thank you. God bless you. And have a great week. Ciao.